Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Did you ever struggle to get your DAX formulas behaves right? If this is the case, I believe the secret lies in understanding the raw context. The raw context is the process, how Power BI or DAX engine processing each and every line or row inside a table individually. It's also the foundation of a lot of functions like calculate, filter or sum x. In this video, we're going to simplify the raw context. We're going to start inside an Excel sheet and try to see if there is a similar concept inside Excel, similar to raw context. And then we're going to Power BI and look into the calculated columns and how it behaves. And then we're going to try to do a measure and to see how we can invoke the raw context inside a measure. Let's go directly and have a look on our example for today. To simplify the concept, let's start from an Excel sheet. We have a sales data for some products. You can see we have four columns, product ID, then product name, quantity, and price. I need to calculate the sales easily. I can just multiply the quantity times the price in order to get the gross sales. This data is formatted as a table. Select the table and go to table design. You will see that we formatted this data as a table and the table named sales. Let's do a very basic trial to calculate the sales. I'm going to do it outside the table at the beginning. So in column H, I'm going to type equal. And then I need to reference the cell E3. You can see here E3 where the quantity is located. So I'm going to type E3. And then times, I need to reference the cell F3 for the price. So I'm going to type F3 and then enter. And I got 2200, which is basically the gross sales for the helmets. If I want to apply the same to the rest of the table, I'm going to copy. Or I can just drag with the mouse. I can just drag with the mouse. You will see that when I move to the next line, the formula updated. Look at the formula bar, E4 to F4. Look at the formula bar again, E5 times F5, and so on and so forth. And that's why I have different results. A very similar formula, which is two references times each other. But when I drag down, the reference is changing as I go down. So that's why the number is changing as I drag the formula down. Now let me delete this and let's try to do this inside the table and we'll see what will happen. I'm going to select the cell G2 and I'm going to type the name of the new column, which will be basically the gross sales. Because it's table formatted, you can see that the range expanded automatically. I can apply the same concept. I'm going to type equal and then quantity. I'm going to select quantity by the mouse this time and times the price. Look at the formula bar now. You will see that two square brackets and then add quantity two square brackets at price. What this means, means that the reference now is not looking into the cell. It is looking into the entire column. The first column called quantity. That's why Excel automatically generated inside the formula the name of the column, which is quantity. Same for price. Not only that, and also there is an at. You can see this at before the name of the column quantity and another at before the name of the column price. Let me just hit enter. Because it is table formatted, you see that the formula copied till the end. If you check the formula bar for each and every line of my gross sales column, you will see it's exactly the same. Yeah, I'm selecting the first line, add quantity times add sales. The second line, add quantity times add sales. Third line, same thing, and so on and so forth till end of the table. How the Excel engine managed to understand that we need to move down with the formula or in other words, to apply the formula line by line inside the Excel table. Although we have only one formula typed inside the formula bar, add quantity, add sales. Actually, the add is what tells Excel that you need to go line by line, but there is no change in the formula. There is no change in the reference. It is just working inside the same table, line by line, applying the expression inside the table on each and every line. And this, what we saw now, is nothing but the row context. Using DAX, the same exact concept is applied. The row context, meaning that the expression or the formula will be applied for each and every line inside a specific table. Now we are in Power BI and we have the same exact table. We want to calculate the gross sales. I'm going to do so through a calculated column. From the table tools, I'm going directly to new column. This will prompt me to the formula bar. Let me give a name for this column. 
I'm going to call it gross sales and then equal exactly like what we did previously I need to start by the name of the table I have only one table in this model I'm going to type sales I need to select the quantity and then tab times sales once more the same table I need to fetch the price this time and then the check mark exactly the same behavior like Excel table if you check the first line you will see that 200 times 11 is 2200 500 times 7 3500 200 times 9 1800 and so on and so forth till end of the table and the reason power bi behave this way is simply the row context based on that when you add a calculated column the row context is already there nothing is required from you anything that you are going to add inside a calculated column will be executed line by line across the table Now let's try to do the same calculation. We calculate the gross sales. However, we're going to calculate it using a measure, not inside a calculated column. In order to do so, I'm going again to the table tools and then new measure, and this will prompt me back to the formula bar. Let me give a name. I'm going to call it G sales because I cannot use the same name. So let me just name it G sales and then equal. I'm going to try to do exactly the same. I'm trying to take the column quantity and multiply it by the column price. So let me start by the name of the table, sales and then square bracket. Let me try to type quantity correctly. I want you to notice that there is no IntelliSense now. It is not working, it's not helping me and we'll understand why shortly. And then I'm going to close the bracket and I'm going to multiply times the price. Again, I'm going to type sales open the square bracket and then price close the square bracket and hit the check mark and you will find an error let's try to read through this error it says a single value for column quantity in table sales cannot be determined the engine doesn't know exactly what is the value that you want to use in order to multiply why because the default for measures there is no raw context and that's why inside a measure you are not able to reference a column. You can see this red line, meaning that we have an error here. You cannot reference directly a column inside a measure. Based on that, we can conclude that the row context is not a default inside a measure, meaning that nothing in this formula is telling the Power BI engine or the DAX engine that you need to go row by row and multiply each and every quantity times each and every price. However, you still can invoke the row context inside a measure and this is using an iterator function we have plenty of iterator functions what iterators mean it means that it go line by line or iterate line by line across a table the most famous group of functions that are iterators and working line by line and can be used to invoke the row context is the x family i mean by x family is sum x count x rank x min x max x and so on and so forth so let's try to continue, but this time we're going to use the sum x. If you are not familiar with sum x, it is pretty much similar to some product in Excel. So it will be working line by line inside this table, multiply the price times the quantity, and then sum all together. So before the reference to the columns, I'm going to try to write sum x. The first requirement is a table, and this makes perfect sense. Because I need this function to go line by line, I need at the beginning to tell this function what is the table. In our case, we have only one table. The table is the sales table and then comma. And then an expression. Expressions mean that formula or something like that. And here is our formula, sales quantity times sales price. I can just close the bracket for sum x and hit the check mark. You will see that the error disappeared and also I have measure here. Let's go to the report view so we can just try our new measure. I'm going to add a matrix inside the canvas and inside the matrix I can just bring my new measure G sales and here you go. Here is the grand total of everything and in order to create a meaningful report I can just take the products and put it in the rows and here you go you manage to invoke the row context inside a measure using a DAX iterator function. In our case, we used the sum x and we managed to get the exact same result as we did using a calculated column. Now let's try to see what will happen if we use an iterator function inside a calculated column. So I am back to the table view and from the table tools, I'm going to select new column 
I need to give a name. It should be a unique name. Let me call it GS for gross sales and then equal. I'm going to use exactly the same technique. I'm going to use the sum x function. I'm going to type sum x. The table will be the sales table, comma. I need to multiply the quantity column times the price column. Close the bracket for sum x and hit the check mark. And let's see what will happen. You will see that I have the new column. However, the amount is not correct. It's just showing the grand total of everything, the grand total of all the sales. And if you want to double check this, you'll see the number here, it's 474540. Let me go to our report, the report view. You will see that the grand total in our matrix was the same number, 474540. So based on that, when you try to use an iterator function inside a calculated column, it will not give you the correct results. However, you can fix this by just adding a calculate function at the beginning. So if I go here before the sum x and I type calculate and then close the bracket and the end and hit the check mark, you will see that numbers now are corrected. So the calculate function will correct this error automatically. And finally, and before closing this video, let's try to take this all out. I'm going to delete and I'm going to use the measure that we already calculated in order to call a measure from the model. I just open a square bracket. Here is my single measure, the G sales that we created in the previous section of this video. And I'm going to hit the check mark and you'll see that numbers still correct. The measure itself, it is giving me a correct answer. However, if I use the function itself, the formula or the expression that used to create this measure, it will give me the wrong answer. In order to correct this, I need to add the calculate function. And this can tell you that each and every measure already wrapped inside a calculate function and that's why it is behaving correctly although it is exactly the component of this measure is exactly the same that we tried to write together directly and it was not working understanding the raw context will help you to get your formula behaves right if you found this video useful please hit the like button subscribe and share and also try it yourself and drop me a question if you need any help Thank you very much for your time. See you in the next video and bye.